thanks very much for the chance to talk here. Um, one of the uh, golden rules of climate communication is that, that whenever you present the science of climate change, you should also present solutions. Uh, you don't want to hit people with doom and gloom without also giving them hope and, and a path forward. Now, this morning we're going to be breaking that golden rule. Uh, we're just going to be talking about the science of climate, climate change. And it might be a bit tough, so just, just hang in there and, and throughout the rest of the weekend there should be lots of our solutions and, and hope and, and, and encouraging paths forward. So I'm going to talk about uh, some of the latest physical science and, and, and basically what, what's, what's the science telling us? Uh, I'll, I'll start with the physical science and then uh, our other speakers will, will go into some more specific details. So, so what is the science telling us? Firstly, it's telling us that currently humans are emitting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than any time in human history. No, we're approximately we're emitting about over 30 billion tonnes of CO2 into the air. And this, this graph shows a, a range of um, uh, projections from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. These are the coloured lines where the red line at the top is business as usual, the worst case scenario, and the green line uh, at the bottom is, is the most optimistic scenario where society uh, rapidly changes towards renewable energy. And the black, thicker line is actually what we've been emitting. There was a little dip around 2009 during the GFC, but generally our, our emissions are uh, towards the upper end. We're, we're closer to the worst case scenario than the best case scenario. And the result of this is that we've raised CO2 levels in the atmosphere about 40% since pre-industrial times. This graph isn't a projection. This is actually um, measurements of, of what's happening or what has already happened. And this year, CO2 levels went over 400 parts per million for the first time. And, and that brings CO2 levels up to a level that, that hasn't been seen in millions of years. In fact, a, a study came out early this year that uh, found that around the last time that CO2 levels were around 400 parts per million was about three, four million years ago. And at that time, the Arctic was about eight degrees warmer than, than now. So, so what this tells us is, well, the Earth's past is really a window into our future. And what the Earth's past is telling us is that our climate is highly sensitive to CO2 levels and to our CO2 emissions. So the result of putting, pouring all these heat-trapping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere is that our planet is building up heat. And it's actually building up heat at an astounding rate. What, what this shows is that most of global warming is actually going into the oceans, around 90% of it. And the little red shape down the bottom is, is all, the, all the heat that is going into warming the atmosphere, the land, and melting ice. What, the, what this also shows is, if you look at the, the label on the left, it tells us how much heat is building up. And it talks about 10 to the 21 joules. 10 to the power of 21, which is a one with 21 zeros. Now, physicists would call this a freaking large number. But, but what, what, I mean, it's hard to really conceptualise, what does that mean? But another way of looking at it is, over the last few decades, our planet has been building up heat at a rate of about four Hiroshima bombs worth of heat every second. So consider that going continuously for several decades. That's how much heat our planet is building up. So there's been a lot of talk recently in the new, even in the mainstream media, about um, surface temperatures and ha have they slowed down, has global warming stopped? But we know that our planet continues to build up heat and, and over the last few decades the, the, the heat build up is actually as fast as ever. So what's going on with surface temperatures and global warming? Now this shows the blue line is the, the heat build up that I, the, that I just showed you earlier, and the red line is surface temperature. And what we see is from year to year, surface temperature jumps up and down, and this is largely due to ocean cycles, to the ocean exchanging heat with the atmosphere. So the result is that 
you can you can find any period over a long-term warming trend, you can find any short couple of years where global temperature or surface temperature actually can go down slightly um, just over short periods. And, and this is what's happening with, um, with opponents of climate action. They cherry pick small bits of the data and say, hey look, global warming isn't happening. But you need to look at the long-term trend and you also need to step back and look at what's happening to our climate overall. And what's happening is our, our climate continues to build up heat. And surface temperature and thermometers are not the only way that we measure global warming. We actually have natural thermometers all throughout our climate that are they're observing <coughs> the same consistent picture. We're observing warming in the oceans, in the atmosphere, but also in the land, in the ice, and in animal species. Uh, I won't go through all the examples, we don't have the time, but, but even, even distributions of trees are shifting towards, towards the poles or up mountains um, to, to cooler areas. And even animal species are, sh are showing different, different um, responses to global warming. Their, their distribution is shifting and they're even mating earlier in the year. Now this isn't because animals are getting randier, it's because the, the seasons themselves are shifting. And I'll just give a couple examples. This is the, the um, sea ice extent in the Arctic, which is really one of the most striking examples of, of how global warming is impacting our environment. This is the amount of sea ice covering the Arctic Ocean in, in September, which is their summer melt season. And the sea ice has been shrinking at an accelerating rate. In 2007, it hit a record low level and then for the next few years after that, it rebounded slightly, which led to uh, climate skeptics saying, aha, Arctic sea ice has recovered. But again, it's an example of cherry picking, just taking a few years of data. But, but in 2012, last summer, uh, it, it smashed the previous record and, and it continues to show that long-term trend downwards. Now, similarly with... Uh, this is a, a graph or a map showing what's happening to the world's glaciers. And basically, every region throughout the planet, glaciers are shrinking. Uh, th this is particularly the case in Greenland, but, but uh, overall, uh, glaciers, I think this is uh, 2003 to 2009, glaciers have, have lost, I think it's 269 billion tonnes of ice each year over that period. Uh, when they look at uh, what's happening to glaciers over a longer period, this is also increasing at an accelerating rate. Now, what's causing this? Um, I, someone sent me an article yesterday. I think the, the Climate Spectator has to publish an article. Uh, someone arguing, where's the evidence that humans are causing global warming? There is actually multiple lines of evidence that, that humans are causing it. And I'm talking about the later science, but this science is actually is old. Some of it's 150 years old. Um, John Tyndall, 150 years ago, predicted what greenhouse warming would look like, the unique human fingerprints in climate. And we're observing those now. Winters are warming faster than summers. Nights are warming faster than days. Satellites are measuring less heat escaping out to space at the exact wavelengths that carbon dioxide absorbs energy. So, so we're seeing all these, these human fingerprints throughout our climate. And a number of studies in recent years have tried to put a number on how much of global warming is caused by humans. And the rough answer is all of it. <laughs> the, on average, uh, around 100% of the global warming trend over the last half century has been, is caused by human activities. Some, some of the studies are a little bit low, below 100%, some of them are a little bit above. The ones, that are, the ones that have a humans causing more than 100%, that's offset by uh, natural, natural um, contributions that are actually causing cooling, such as the sun has been cooling slightly over the last few decades. Volcanoes have, have a cooling influence on climate. But the overall picture is that the humans are causing most, if not all, of the recent global warming. Now, I'm just going to quickly um, talk about a study that, 
that um, I was involved in that was just published last month. And that looked at uh, what the scientific community is saying about uh, human-caused global warming. What we did is we looked at 21 years of published climate research and identified all the papers that stated the position on whether humans were causing global warming. We found about 4,000 papers um, stating a position. And among those 4,000 papers, we found an overwhelming consensus that humans were causing global warming. Over 97% of those papers endorsed the consensus. We found that the consensus was getting stronger. And we found that the consensus had been around since the early 1990s. Now, this, this is a strong contrast with what the public think. Uh, in some other research that I'm doing, uh, I've asked the, asked the public, an American sample and an Australian sample, how many climate scientists do you think agree that humans are causing global warming? And the answer is, on average, around 50%. So the public think that the climate science community is, is pretty much 50-50 debating whether humans are causing global warming. The reality is 97%. Now, this matters because when the public think that climate scientists disagree, then they don't support policy to mitigate climate change. So this misconception actually is a roadblock to climate action. And so, um, yeah, so closing the consensus gap is, is just one action among many of the actions that we'll be talking about this weekend, which we need to, um, to, to achieve meaningful climate action. Thanks very much.